in this third part of today's class, let us try to understand how different discourses has been used to portray or to give a meaning to this global environmental reform. And here we will refer or we will draw ideas and inspirations from John uh, Dreyzek's book. Dreyzek says that environmental discourse is a departure from the ideology of industrialism. He is of the opinion that that industrialism or industrial society may have different ideologies. It may have communism, it may have socialism, it may have liberalism, but one thing common about all these ideologies that is that of industrialism or its reliance on, on industry or environmentalism or environmental discourse may be considered as a departure from this industrialism. And while understanding departure from the industrialism, Dreyzek says that the departure can be either reformist or radical. So, when we are trying to portray an idea about nature or when we are trying to construct an idea about nature apart from the industrialism or, or as different from that of industrialism, our ideas about nature can be reformist, our ideas about environmental reform or environmental alterations can be a reformist idea or it can be a radical idea. We may believe that with regard to environmental problems, we may believe that environmental problems can be solved with certain reforms, with certain reforms in environmental policy, with certain reforms in industrial policy, with certain reforms in the way in which we use nature or environmental problems can be solved only with a radical overhaul of the society, with a radical transformation of the society. So, therefore, Dreyzek says that, that environmental uh, departures or uh, de departures from the industrialism can be either radical or it can it can be reformist. Again, he says that that departures from the industrialism can also be prosaic, it can or it can be imaginative. By prosaic departure, Dreyzek basically means that environmental problems require certain action, but which do not point to a new kind of society. In other words, in our attempt to solve the environmental problems or in attempt to bring environmental reforms, we necessarily should do something, but it is not required that we need new kind of society or we need a complete transformation of the society with the present society with certain kind of reforms with certain kind of policy interventions maybe it is possible to bring certain certain environmental uh, reforms or to protect uh, the nature likewise the imaginative departure considers environmental problem as an opportunity to dissolve the old order and bring a new order so with regard to environmental reforms Dreyzek's ideas basically say that that when we are reforming the nature or we when we are bringing certain environmental reforms we are at a point where we have certain options or we have two options on the one hand our reforms or our environmental protection measures or environmental conservation measures or our our efforts to preserve conserve the nature can be a radical enterprise it can be a radical endeavor or it can be a reformist endeavor and similarly it can be prosaic endeavor we accept that yes we need to do something but it is not required that we should change the society and bring in a different kind of society or in other words we should change this industrial society and dismantle the industrial society and bring a completely different kind of society. And the imaginative discourse or imaginative departure says that that environmental change or environmental reforms or environmental problems are an opportunity with which we can do something with which we can we can replace the old order and bring a new order. Combining this, this prosaic versus imaginative departure and radical versus reformist departure, Dreyzek tries to find out four important discourses of global environmental change. The prosaic reformist discourse, he terms it as, as environmental problem solving. The prosaic radical discourse, he terms it as, as survivalism. And the imaginative reformist discourse, he terms it as sustainability. And finally, the imaginative radical discourse he points out as green radicalism. So, let us understand what are these four important environmental discourses and how can we understand the global environmental change or how can we understand the global environmental reforms or, or, or the, the reformative environmental policies from these four perspectives or from these four uh, discourses. So, the environmental problem solving which Dreyzek identifies as a prosaic or reformist discourse basically considers the political economic status quo as given which needs certain adjustment by means of changes in public policy and government reforms to cope with the environmental problems or in other words environmental problem solving tries to portray the idea or tries to tries to explain environmental reforms as an opportunity where it is not required to completely dismantle the society, not required to completely dismantle our relationship with nature, but what is required is certain, certain reforms that we can solve the environmental problems by bringing certain reforms. We, we, in other words, what, what, what implications does it have for the industrial society? In other words, environmental problems solving tries to portray, tries to narrate the idea that industrialism 
or industrial society can continue exploitation of nature, but what is required to solve the uh, recurrent environmental problems, what is required to solve the contemporary environmental problems is certain kind of reforms. There is no need to transform the industrial society completely and bring in a new kind of uh, society or bring, bring in a new mode of production, industrial mode of production, or industrialism should continue. But what is required to solve the contemporary environmental problems is certain kind of reforms. So, where environmental problems are considered as problems which can be solved with certain environmental managerialism. So, environmental problem solving approach points towards environmental managerialism. In other words, we need to manage the nature in the right manner, we need to manage the environment in the right manner. So, environmental problems definitely pose problems for the humanity, but that does not mean that environmental problems has the capability of dismantling the society. It is not that the society will completely be dismantled, society will be completely ruptured because of the environmental problems. So, environmental problems can be solved with policy interventions, environmental problems can be solved with adjustment in policy. As opposed to this, the survivalism discourse. Drezek points out that it the survivalism discourse points that understanding unrelenting economic growth and the ever increasing pressure on environment due to rising population would eventually hit the environmental limits. Or in other words, survivalism, which is a prosaic radical discourse, basically begins with accepting the ecological limits. It says that 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 ecology has certain limits, there is an outer limit for this ecology or for, for this ecosystem and the the rising population growth, the rising demand for raw materials, the rising demand of the industrial society will ultimately hit these limits. So, therefore, it demands to shift the focus away from incessant economic growth and a, and, and, and a complete redistribution of the power of the political economy of the industrial society. So, in other words, survivalism basically argues that we need to change the way in which we approach the nature because our current approach towards nature, our current uses of the nature simply ignores the outer limits of ecosystem. So, therefore, our survival is at stake. What is it at stake because of this environmental problems is our survival. Human survival on this earth is at stake and that cannot be solved with managerial approach, with, um, uh, with environmental managerialism. So, survivalism basically requires that, that environmental problems can be solved only when we bring in a completely different kind of redistribution mechanism, only when we completely bring a complete redistribution of the political economy of the industrial society. That it is the industrial society which is creating these environmental problems and these environmental problems can only be solved with certain radical measures. We need to completely change the way in which which industrial society approaches the nature. The third kind of discourse which Rejek talks about is that of sustainability. Sustainability is an imaginative reformist discourse. Unlike survivalism, which is more a radical discourse, which talks about completely overhauling, completely transforming our relationship with nature or completely bringing out a new kind of society, completely bringing out new political economic changes in society. So, sustainability discourse basically attempted to blur the difference between economic growth and environmental protection. So, sustainability discourse basically argues that the dichotomy between nature and growth or dichotomy between economic growth and environmental resources are a false dichotomy. It is not necessary that to curb environmental pollution, we should reduce our growth. What sustainability discourse argues that it, it tries to redefine growth and, and development while making ideas about limits, uh, uh, while making the ideas of limits less relevant. Or in other words, sustainability discourse does not emphasize upon the ecological limits. What it emphasizes is reforming the growth process. What it emphasizes is fine tuning the growth process, so that we can achieve economic growth, we can achieve industrialism or we can achieve industrialization, but at the same time we should we should consider about, about the natural limits or we should consider the ecological limits of nature. So, in that sense sustainability discourse or sustainability discourse of global environmental change or global environmental reform is a more reformist discourse. It is not a radical discourse, it is a reformist discourse which considers environmental problem as an opportunity with which we can reform our growth process. So, in other words it does not require a complete you turn in the growth process, it does not require that you stop your growth process, do not industrialize, do not uh, withdraw resources from nature. What basically it argues is that, that we need to reform the growth process, we need to make the growth process more eco-friendly, we, we need to make the growth process more, more sensitive 
towards the nature. The last discourse which, which Dreyzig talks about is that of green radicalism. Green radicalism basically talks about or it rejects the basic structure of industrial society. So, it says that it is the industrial society which is problematic. So, therefore, environmental reforms and environmental protection cannot be brought out with an industrial social order. So, in that sense, it rejects the basic structure of industrial society and the anthropocentric conceptualization of environment. So, in other words, green radicalism basically demands for complete overhaul of society. It demands for complete transformation of society. It is completely against the industrial way of life. So, in other words, what Drezek argues is that global environmental change can be understood with these four important discourses. So, these four discourses that of environmental problem solving, which is a more, more reformist discourse, which says that, that environmental problems can be solved with right kind of right kind of technology, with right kind of right kind of environmental policy, or in other words, with an environmental managerial approach. So, environmental problem solving or the discourse of environmental problem solving basically believes in coming out with right kind of policies, right kind of programs, so that environment can be managed in a sustainable manner. Environment can be managed in, in a better way and, and environmental problems can be solved or environmental problems are solvable. So, in other words, environmental problem solving discourse does not emphasize the ecological limits. What it emphasizes is, is the ability of the human society to come out with reforms, so that environmental problems can be solved. The second discourse that, that Rezek defines or identifies is that of survivalism. Survivalism basically highlights the outer limits of the ecological system or it highlights the limits of ecological system. It, it invokes the ideas of carrying capacity. And survivalism basically says that what is at stake is human being survival. And to ensure our survival, we need to bring a complete different kind of social order. That the present social order is problematic because it is increasing dependence of nature, because of population growth, because of rising industrialization creates problem for human society. And, and we can ensure our survival only when we, we alter or we modify or we change our attitude, our, our use and our perception towards the nature. The third discourse that Dreze talks about is that of sustainability. Sustainability discourse basically is a reformist discourse and sustainability discourse underplays or does not give much importance to ecological limits. Rather, what it emphasizes is reforming the growth process. Sustainability discourse very clearly argues in favor of economic growth economic growth is not problematic, but the growth has to be reformed. The growth process has to be ecological friendly, the growth process has to be ecologically sensitive and the growth process has to be has to ensure the growth has to ensure benefits to the present generation as well as the future generation. As we define sustainability that it is a kind of development which ensures or which, which fulfills the needs of the present generation and while at the same time ensures or while at the same time guarantees need satisfaction of the future generation. So, in other words, sustainable development basically talks about bringing reforms in the growth process, where with which we can continue our growth in the present time and we can continue our growth in the future time also. So, therefore, sustainable development emphasizes on economic growth and it, it, it acknowledges the existence of limits, but does not highlight existence of limits, does not highlight existence of ecological limits. And the fourth approach, the most radical approach is that of green radicalism. And green radicalism basically argues that it is the industrialism, industrial society which is problematic and which creates environmental problems. And you cannot and cannot solve environmental problems with an industrial ideology or, or, or solving environmental problems become difficult with an industrial ideology. So, therefore, it basically rejects industrialism and, and, and talks about a different kind of social order, where there will be complete different kind of uses of nature. So, these are broadly the four fundamental discourses or the four broad discourses, which define environmental reforms in contemporary times. Now, let me come to the, the uh, to the reading or the primary reading for this course. I have identified two important readings for this course. One is John Hanningen's uh, book Environmental Sociology, specifically the third chapter. I have referred the second chapter for the previous class, for the last class and third chapter is important for this class on environmental discourses. And besides Hanningen, I have also identified the, uh, another source that is John Dreyzik's book, The Politics of the Earth, Environmental Discourses, especially the first chapter, which will help you 
to understand multiple discourses that is required to understand global environmental change in contemporary times. You go through the text module which is attached to this video lecture and read these two primary readings, then you will have a clear idea about the contemporary discourses and the multiple discourses to understand the nature. Thank you.